Uh, in this video here, um, we're going to help you with some work out of the textbook and that's going to be about multiplying and dividing integers. So on some level, all we're doing is just crunching some numbers, either multiplying them together or dividing them. Okay, so in some level, it's good practice just to do that. And um, I've got my card again. Uh, in this unit here on negative numbers, we're thinking about this is this is a critical thing here. We're thinking about numbers as having a certain size and the sign. So mostly all the work that you've done so far, you haven't even bothered about the sign. We've been living in this world where we're, all the numbers that we're dealing with are on the positive side of zero. Um, so we haven't had to even worry about, well, was that positive five or was it negative five that we're multiplying or dividing, okay? But now this bit here is in here is, is the most important thing. So if you understand size of a number, we can break, we can crunch numbers and just do this bit, okay? Uh, work on the size of the number, multiply them together, make them bigger, divide them. Uh, see how many groups of a certain number go into uh, another number. That's fine. You've been doing that work. Um, but now, here we are thinking about the sign. So, my bit of advice for you uh, today is to do exactly what I've been talking about. You can multiply the numbers, you can divide the numbers just like you've been doing and for some of you that's really good practice that you need to continue with. The next level is understanding the <coughs> how the signs work. Okay, so I always often do this. I, I, I crunch the numbers then I stop to think about what is a sign of the final answer, okay? Is it a positive or is it a negative? And what I've got for you and what I'm going to suggest for you to do today is up in the top corner of your page, write down the very first thing that I'm going to put on the board. And there's just this different combinations if we multiply a positive number by a negative number. The sign of the answer is predictable. And so there's a little sketch or a little table that might be a good little reference point for you to write these things down and maybe do it a couple of times until you commit it to memory. Um, and often, sometimes I even come back to reassure myself I've got the sign and the answer correct. And I think in this particular way and draw out this little drawing that I've got to show you first up. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that and we'll get behind the light board and show you a few moves. All right. I was, in the introduction to this video, I was asking you to write something down in, on the top of your page for this kind of work. So, and the reason that I'm asking you to write it down because you need to refer to it all the time. And eventually, you'll embed it in your mind, okay? And it'll be, it'll be easier to understand. So I've written it out here. <clears throat> We're multiplying numbers. So just take a moment and see that that is a multiply sign. Also see that I've just used, just like the battery terminals, a positive sign and a negative sign. I've just drawn a little circle for positive and negative, okay? Um, the numbers, when we multiply them, well, we want to crunch the numbers and get that right. But when we're doing this unit on negative numbers, we also need to think about the sign. So we need a little way to <clears throat> map things out. So here is, if this is the first time you've ever heard about a negative number, um, you've been doing this the whole time and you haven't even stopped to think about it or someone, no one's sort of told you or alerted you to um, 
numbers have a sign that goes with them. So if you've been doing your times tables and you've been doing three times three and three times four, and that's nine and that's 12, you haven't stopped to think about, well, that's positive three times by a positive three or a positive four, and your answer is a positive 12, nine or a positive 12. Simple as that, all right? What we need to think about now is other combinations. And you've got, <clears throat> if you're multiplying two numbers together, well, you know, how many combinations are there? There's four that I've drawn here, but we could even in a moment stop and think about what's happening here and save ourselves a little bit of work, all right? Um, so, Let's explain. A positive times a positive, the answer is going to be a positive number, okay? In the middle here, we've got opposite signs. We've got a positive times a negative, and the other way around, a negative times a positive. And in both cases, the answer has a negative sign in front of it. So. Whatever the numbers are, let's, let's do 2, positive 2, times negative 5. So the answer is negative 10. And let's keep the numbers the same, but swap the signs. It could be as easy as thinking about it like this. We're still at negative 10. So what does that tell us? When the signs are opposite, the number is a negative. The answer, sorry, the answer will be a negative. The final case is an interesting one too. We've got two negative numbers in here multiplied together and we end up with a positive answer. So that's kind of similar to the top box. We had the same signs, they were both positives, and we ended up with a positive number. When the signs are, we're multiplying two numbers of, with negative signs in front of them, we end up with a positive answer as well, okay? So, what do we need to remember? What we need to write in our little space that we've got up here, at the bare minimum, what do we need to remember? Opposite signs, Signs, negative. And that can look like something like uh, a plus times a negative equals a negative. And the other thing to write is when you have two negatives, two negative. So what's that look like? A negative times a negative equals a positive. Okay, that's probably the new thing for you. If you want to, you can write down the whole thing that I've got on the left-hand side of the board. I don't mind. But we need something just to check about our science, which, how's it gonna work? So um, what we can also do, uh, and I hope what you understand here, is that we can come back here and just because I'm on the light board here, I can um, rub that out and replace it with a division sign. Because the same sort of thinking applies when we divide numbers. Okay? And the same sort of rules apply. So, do we need to write it out, out a second time with a division sign? Or do we just understand that multiplication and division are opposite operations of each other? So they're doing the same sort of work. So does it really matter what goes in here, whether it's a multiply or a division sign? So I kind of, and you know, I can force you to write it all out or I can talk to you like this and just get you to understand um, what we need to be careful of. So, 
I reckon the best thing to do now is actually do some numbers and just check out how this works. So let's do this three times minus five. This is a positive three. It wasn't written in the textbook like that, but it's positive times a negative. And so I know the sign is going to be a negative. Then I can come in and crunch the numbers. Three times five is 15. Or I could have done it the opposite way around. I could have went three times five is 15 and wrote my number. Come back and consider the sign, okay? And understand that it needs to be a negative 15. Um, let's try another example. Let's do this. Negative 2 times negative 14. No brackets this time. We don't really need them. Again, it's only helping us identify that it's a negative number. So I'm going to crunch the numbers. I'm going to 2 times 14. That's essentially doubling 14, which is 28. Write down my number. Free up my mind a little bit to come back and consider the sign. So I've got a negative multiplied by a negative, okay? Um, so my answer has to be a positive uh, 28, okay? So, because I've got a negative multiplied by a negative. And this helps, actually. I would encourage you to write positive 28 just to satisfy yourself that you have applied the rules correctly and made it clear to, to everyone. Explicit is probably the word I'd use right there. So let's try another situation here. Let's try uh, another number. So let's just keep it simple. Two times negative three times negative four. Okay, I'm gonna put a positive here to indicate that uh, that two is a positive number and help me out with my signs. Let's crunch the numbers. Uh, I'm thinking two times three is six, times four is 24. So I've just done the numbers. I've freed up my mind a little bit here and um, I'm seeing two different ways to do this. I've got a negative times a negative here. So um, if I just looked at this and sort of forgot about that it's all multiplied by 2, I would end up here at positive 12. And if I just drop this down a little bit here, I've got positive 2 times positive 12, and that's going to be positive 24. Okay, so you can see, some of you might have been thinking, oh, hang on, he's multiplying three numbers together but I've only got a table here that lets me deal with two numbers that are multiplied together. Uh, can you see what I've done here? I've thought about two of them and I've chosen the two numbers with uh, the negative signs and I've worked that out and then multiplied the numbers together. But also thinking again in a second step here, more looking here and they're both positive so my answer will be positive as well so um the obvious answer is well let's do this again this time let's make them all negative and uh we know our answer is going to be 24 that's not the interesting part here the interesting part is that we've got let's do these two together Two negatives multiplied together is going to give positive six. And then we're going to times that by negative four. So we're in a situation here, we've got a positive times a negative. So our overall answer here will be negative 24. Okay, so that's a way to break it up and to think about how to um, apply these rules when you've got more than two numbers multiplied together. So I'm going to stop and clean the board. I'm going to do some work with some numbers, just dividing them and, and show you a few tips there. In the board, but I've left up the top here, I've left the key bits of information that I need to know. All right, and what I'm doing, I'd encourage you every day for the next, now that we've done this, the next uh, few weeks is just to write them down at the top of the page, wherever you, 
you might need to multiply or divide some numbers you need to know this information and it's a good way to embed that knowledge so hopefully now we understand we can crunch the numbers and then we can come back and look at the sign so we're going to do some division and uh, let's do this 40 how many negative 20s all right that might not make a lot of sense to us because um, we've got how many we see the division sign and we're still thinking about well let's put them into smaller groups and um, with 40 I can make two groups of 20 okay but hang on this negative sign is, is throwing me here um, I understand how it works in the physical world but we've got this negative in front of it here that so my may throw us so we, we can see the answer is two there's two lots of 20 that make 40 all right but we need to think about what's happening with the sign we have opposite signs here so this will be a negative 2 as our answer okay um, what I what I would say to you is um, if you're still thinking about how many uh, you need to try and upgrade your skills here a little bit because when I look at this kind of question what I would write is 40 positive 40 over uh, negative 20 and I would cancel that 20 is a common factor goes in once goes in twice and then I would look at the sign and see that they're opposite signs and, and say that's negative 2 <clears throat> And you, again, you might be saying, well, hang on there, why is that negative sign down there? And then we transfer it up here. Um, it's, it's just one of those things where uh, we're thinking about the overall answer and what sign that it takes. Um, confusing, but it's something you need to practice. So let's look at another question divided by uh, how many groups of negative 25 okay so um, we might see the answer here we might see it as 5 then we come back and look at the sign so we have both negatives they're both the same so the overall answer is 5 and if you um, are getting the hang of what I'm saying over here I'd, I'd look at this question and set it up like this um, negative 25 I'd do the work here I'd see that 25 is a common factor and that it goes in once into 25 and five times up here so my overall answer will be five <clears throat> but I'm looking at the signs I'm looking at the signs and this is the way I tend to work they're both negative so I come in here when I see that and change them to a positive and then I come over here and put positive 5 just to um, help me with my work okay so what I'm saying here is is kind of something that works for you if you're good what do you need to be good with you need to be good with finding common factors and cancelling down and then finally just recognizing what we're saying with the signs and 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 producing our answers like this um, some students may not see this yet but it's it's worth uh, pointing out to you and trying to upgrade your skill a little bit um, and then of course then of course I understand that some students are not really strong with division so um, if you always want to check your answer you're most welcome to get on the calculator and put in uh, the numbers as you see them there's a little button on your calculator that has like a little negative sign in a set of brackets like that um, find that use that as your negative sign okay um, the other thing I need to talk to you about is 
uh, index laws. There's a nice little way to um, to sort of get a really good understanding of what's happening here. So I'm just going to use um, two as my base. And let's just map out a doubling pattern here. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, that will do us. And we'll, we'll see what we need to see there. So let's use negative two raised to the power of two. Um, and if you need some reminders, that's two times two, and that will be equal to four. Um, I've forgotten the signs in here, so let's put in the negative signs in here and consider the sign of the overall answer, positive four. So let's do negative two to the power of three and see what that looks like. Negative two times negative two times negative two. So that's going to be eight. We need to come back and think about the sign. We've got three negatives here. And if we just concentrate on this, we get to positive four times two and the signs are opposite now and it's a negative eight. Let's try the next one. We're just raising the index by one. So now we've got negative two to the power of four. And without doing all this crunchy stuff in the middle here, I'm going to use my information over here. So I know my answer is going to be 16 because I'm just doubling. And I perhaps will just think about what's happening here. We've got four negative signs in there. So those two together produce a positive. Those two together produce a positive. A positive times a positive, the overall sign of the answer is a positive. Are you starting to see a little bit of a pattern here? Because I'm going to jump straight to here. This is 32, and I know the sign's got to be a negative. Okay? Uh, negative two to the power of six is going to be positive 64. Negative 2 to the power of 7, I'm just going to double that number and I've got 128 uh, and I know it's going to be a negative. And why do I know that? There's a little pattern here that is worth exploring. When, when the index is positive, I have a positive number. When the index is negative, uh, odd, odd, I have a negative, odd, negative, odd, negative. And it's worth remembering that because that saves a lot of work when you're dealing with uh, these kind of situations here where a negative number is raised to a certain power. You can look at that power and have a look, is it even or odd? And then you'll know the sign of the overall answer as well. So there's a good little tip for you. All right, thank you.